Hi, this is Coach Chuck of the National Free Flight Society's Youth Development Program. We welcome you to today's video. Uh, the purpose of these videos is to help uh, newcomers to indoor flying, including students in scholastic competitions such as uh, Science Olympiad, uh, get started in their building and flying processes. Uh, if you get something out of this video, we'd appreciate it if you like the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you'll be notified of new videos as they come along. Today we're going to look at tying the rubber loop for your indoor rubber powered model airplane, especially for uh, Science Olympiad. Uh, we will take a look at making a nice tight knot at the length or weight desired and uh, also looking at getting the exact uh, weight desired. Uh, this is useful for F1D, F1M, and in some years uh, with uh, Science Olympiad we need an exact weight of the rubber. So let's take a look first at the tools required and then we'll go to tying the rubber. First off obviously you'll need your rubber. Today we're going to use 332nd inch stock rubber to make a loop for F1M. You'll need your O-rings and uh, a lot of kits and Science Olympiad users uh, use a uh, round rubber O-ring about a quarter inch in diameter. My preference is uh, nylon O-rings cut out of a nylon antenna tubing. This is a Dubro number 511. It's available for about a buck fifty at your local hobby shop or uh, on Amazon or other mail order places and I slice these to about one millimeter thick using a straight edge uh, razor blade and you just push down the slice make sure your razor blade is sharp. These will not uh, twist around when you get to very high torque and they won't um, uh, break either. They're, they're good for most classes of indoor rubber fly. I also take a, uh, uh, let's, let's get this out of the way I take a small piece of wire. This is uh, 18 thousandths. I happen to have laying around. You can use 20 or 15, whatever you have, and fold it in, sh in half sharply. And this, uh, we'll see, helps you get the O-rings onto the rubber, especially uh, for the wider pieces of rubber like we'll be using today. It's critical that you have a good scale. This is an American Way Gemini uh, 20. It's got a 10 year warranty and it measures to uh, the milligram. This is uh, a favorite scale to use for indoor modeling. You get three digits on the, the grams and it weighs up to 20 grams. You don't want something that will measure 500 grams because you're going to be measuring a gram or less. So something that uh, you're more in the range of the scale is good. On this scale I added a piece of eighth inch inside diameter brass tubing, glued it with hot melt glue to the stand, and I drilled about a quarter inch hole in the lid. I made a, a foam and carbon fiber stand. You could use a, a stick of um, uh, dowel rod in there as well. And this allows you to get the rubber up above the scale and uh, hang it down without uh, laying it on the table so you get an accurate measurement. It also separates the scale from the rubber so if you've just sliced rubber you don't get static electricity issues on the rubber. You'll need uh, a good set of scissors and a good set of hemostats. Now what do I mean by a good set? I mean uh, hemostats that the uh, teeth come together nicely and no gaps in here. It's straight uh, coming together the two halves here and we're about an eighth of an inch wide in here. So some of the smaller hemostats are a little too flimsy for this. I get these at a uh, fly fishing shop. Uh, they're about uh, eight to ten dollars, maybe eleven. Um, but a good quality he he set of hemostats will really go a long way toward uh, tying. You need your rubber lube. I use uh, silicon shock oil. This is available from any local hobby shop. You can also use uh, spray armor oil, uh, which is a silicon oil that's suspended in water. So there's a little more liquid involved and the water will evaporate out. 
um, this is my preference available at the local hobby shop you'll need a uh, uh, ruler for measuring the length of your loop and then of course some uh, slips to keep track of your data on your rubber and a uh, Ziploc bag I like the snack size for storing the rubber in once you've cut it okay let's let's get into the cutting your first step will be to get a suitable length of rubber we're looking for one and a half grams and you want to fold the rubber a couple of times and lay it on your uh, stand then if you take this last fold and hang it out uh, horizontally with the top and I'm at 1.53 there I can make it heavier by going down lighter by going up go straight across and get it slightly above the weight you're interested in and then snip it off and we came out at 1.537 now if you want really accurate uh, results you'll want to wash your rubber first uh, just use some warm water and some dish soap and then thoroughly rinse it and dry it off um, you can pat it dry with paper towels uh, this gets all the talcum powder off the, off the rubber that it was stored with and uh, will reduce your weight slightly you'll see this weight reduction once you use the uh, uh, rubber on a plane with lube um, but if you're trying to get the most possible rubber you want to uh, do that first now in the case of F1M uh, the o-rings do not count toward the weight of the rubber so we're going to get the rubber right to the correct weight without o-rings on the science olympiad classes uh, when they had weight limits it included the o-rings so you want to go ahead and put o-rings on uh, before you uh, uh, weigh the rubber so we're at 1.498 uh, perfect for our use we can take it off the scale now and we'll go ahead and record the uh, source of the rubber is uh, I use the date so uh, 12 13 19 the width of the rubber in this case is 330 seconds stock and the weight we say 1.499 grams that's without o-ring again if your uh, if your class requires uh, the o-rings to be part of the weight be sure to have those on uh, for the F1M class we then have to very carefully cut all the o-rings the same size using a, a fixture and then we can tear the o-rings meaning we weigh 10 of them get the weight of those and uh, divide by 10 and then multiply by 2 for the the two o-rings uh, on your rubber now we take the rubber and we put it into this piece of wire into the loop on the wire and then we bring the ends together and we go ahead and feed the two o-rings onto the ends here and this makes it real easy to pull the rubber into the smaller o-rings like this now you want to bring the two ends of the rubber together and get them lined up pretty well with each other they're flat and next to each other and you're going to take the hemostats if you get the the good eighth inch wide ones you're going to go into the toothed area and go about halfway across the jaws of the hemostat and I go in about two clicks make sure it's nice and tight then we take a little bit of your lube and we just work it in the first inch or two of the rubber you want to lube the rubber where you're going to be tying it or the rubber will cut itself So we just wrap the uh, two uh, strands of the rubber around our finger pass it through the the loop there to make a half hitch we want to make sure both these legs between the hemostat and that knot are about the same length and then we just pull the outer two legs of the rubber to pull that knot tight and you can pull it really tight you're not going to break it make that knot as small as you can put your finger in there again wrap the uh, rubber around your finger and through the hole for another half hat half hitch 
Again, make sure these two legs are about the same length before you pull it tight. Then pull it tight against the hemostat. And when you open it up, you have a very well matched and no excess rubber, so you haven't changed your weight. And then I'm going to take just a tiny dot of CA and just touch the ends to the CA. You don't have to immerse the knot in CA, just a little bit on the ends and that will secure the knot without adding much weight. A lot of times I, I can get away with no CA, but uh, uh, sometimes it helps. Now get your uh, ruler out and I just hang the knot right off the end of the ruler so the, the, the uh, inside end of the knot is, is right against the ruler. Lay the rubber along the ruler and then take your pen or pencil and just pull it straight gently. You don't want to stretch it, just, just get the loop about straight and this looks to be about a 30 centimeter loop. So I'll set the length at 30 centimeter. It doesn't matter exactly how you do this as long as you're consistent. This is your data uh, to work with. And there you have it, a nice uh, uh, loop of the right length. We'll go ahead and, and double check the mass on this. We're at 1.509. We got about 6 milligrams per uh, o-ring so we're about three milligrams underweight which is right where we want to be um, you can use this uh, approach on any size rubber um, I've used it up to eighth inch uh, rubber and down to scrap sizes which is uh, about a twenty thousandth uh, piece of rubber uh, this this method will work good across the board. Okay, once you have your uh, record of your rubber here, you keep that with the rubber. The winds and torque is when, when you go to break in the rubber, the first time you wind it, you can record the winds and torque there. So you have a reference each time you wind it in the future. And there you have it. We hope this short video has been helpful to you and, and will help you move forward with tying your rubber. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our site and like the video. If you subscribe, you'll get updates as we release more of these uh, videos for uh, new uh, indoor flyers. So please uh, like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.